Okay, here we go. We've got a little vintage piece here. So this is a kimono. It belongs to a friend of mine. She loves it. She absolutely loves it. Loves the fabric, loves the print. But she, because we live in Queensland, she wants to make a shorter version with this. So we're going to use all of this. We love the sleeves. We're not going to touch the sleeves. Um, so we're leaving that as is, but we're going to take a majority of this away. And what we're going to, it's going to probably be worn with um, jeans or even cut off jeans or even little pencil skirt could be worn with it. Um, so what we're going to, or a tube skirt, just a little tube skirt would look fantastic with it because it's kind of, it's got the bulky up here. So it needs slender down the bottom. So we're going to chop it probably about here. So about there would be good. So it's actually going to cover your high hip area and your bottom. So here we go around the back. So that's probably going to, there's the bottom. It's going to probably going to sit around here. So that's the next thing we're going to do. And then we'll put it back on the model. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut it longer and then pin it up to exactly where we would like it to sit. And what's the technique we're using on the bottom to, to finish off the hem? We were we're talking going about... to bag it out. I love bagging We're you. going to bag it. We're not going to turn it back like that because that would look really unfinished and unprofessional. It's not very professional at all. So we're going to uh, chop it longer and then we're going to work out exactly the length we want. Okay. All right. So. Okay, show me this. I could even cover it with fabric too if I didn't want to really look at the iPhone. Yeah, but we, we're too busy for that. Yeah, okay, so you can <laughs> fill it up. You can fill it up with all your uh, pins and you can put your little uh, screwdrivers, whatever, even your, even your sewing foot or two in there. It's great and it's, and it's a good little place. And it's recycling. If it falls off the table, look what happens. It doesn't go everywhere. Yay! Sensational. So I must recommend... <laughs> A new phone so I can get the iPhone off <laughs> <laughs> for all those people out there. I love it. Okay, all right. what we're going to do first is we're going to put this together first like this and we're just going to put a few pins in place um, to hold it there. So, here we go. Pick up this side. Put it together. So what we basically just we're going to lie it flat as we can for the cut. And I'm going to put another couple of pins along here. And um, it's because we want we want the the cut across here to be as accurate as possible. And once you've done that, grab the old tape measure. So I said we're going to leave a fair bit here so we can muck around with the length. So I'm going to probably leave oh, maybe, maybe about six inches. So. And that still leaves us plenty of room to cut out. I'm going to cut out the corset top up with the remnants. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. All right. So then we get a pencil and mark from the hem up to there. I'm just going to make it 19 inches. If you want to work in centimeters, we can do that too. But I like working in inches because it's um, an easier measurement to divide. <laughs> Is it? Well, I think so. Oh, I might be wrong, but that's what I've learned since leaving um, college and working with all the old machinists around the place. They all worked in Imperial, so, so am I. Okay, so we just go across here at 19, and then we, I've got a nice big set square. So I'm gonna- I love that. Yeah. That is super cool. Yeah. And so you mark with pencil? I mark with pencil, and then I'm going to make sure that it's, um, that I've squared it off here before I cut and it's um, make sure these um, that lines up which it does and then I'll just um, it should be actually I probably should do the squaring off over here as well just to make sure that it's 
going to be straight and we don't have this you know peak happening on the center back so now I'm going to join those lines there okay. all right okay so now we're going to chop across here no going back now it's all happening right there we go so here is the corset fabric we're not going to waste a thing so that's gone and we've got our kimono short kimono now which has turned into a nice jacket it's going to look great now i actually think the length it is now is good what do you okay think? i love so it we don't really need to chop anything anything more off it and we're just going to we're going to bag it out now and we're just going to have just a tiny seam probably about one centimeter or even six mil six mil would be enough for this so that's what we're going to do what do you think i you love happy it with that yeah you know that would make a great uh, uh jacket for the beach too oh god yeah 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 i just i like the idea of wearing it with just a little cami top exactly and jeans yeah and uh perfect jacket to wear for you know good old movies <laughs> or theater yes okay i'm going to have to oh look at that it's all hand sewn did you know that? No, but it's vintage. It is it's quite vintage. old. So this is all hand sewn. So anyone out there without a sewing machine, here you go. You can <laughs> Even all the seams are hand sewn. <laughs> They're all hand sewn. Oh my God. Wow. All of it. All, yeah, look at that. Yep, yeah, it's all hand sewn. So the, how interesting is that? And they've, and the, so they've been able to, like every, all the lining is caught together through it as well. But that's okay, that's fine. We'll have to, um, but what we'll have to do, because we have to, get into part of it here so we can do the bagging out. Um, we're going to have to undo that there and that there and that there so we can get into it. Um, so we can, yeah. So we're gonna have to go back and top stitch that? We are, uh, but we, won't, we don't have to do the whole thing because that would be taking away the beauty of this, um, this piece, this piece of art, yeah. really. So what we're going to do is just um, tidy, we're just going to come through here and just, you know, do a bit of a back stitch here, here and here so we can, um, so the seams aren't going to do that yeah. unravel. Okay, so that's next. We're going to set the sewing machine up. Okay. How cool is that though, that it's all handmade? Like hand stitched. Oh my God. It's, you know, like they're not even tiny stitches. It's just, yeah, they're just big. It's just a slip stitch all the way through. I'm just doing an anchor stitch right on each one of these you, yeah you're just going to go do the back tack and take it up a little way it's just going to go up and back to join up with the stitching that's already there the hand stitching so how far up do i say oh, ten maybe centimeters. 10 centimeters would be enough and make sure it's on that line yeah that's already there and so every seam that we've just chopped through needs to have that done So that was on the end, so I need to do these each side. Mm -hmm. Yes. That makes absolute sense because that's the last thing I want is my kimono running. Unraveling. <laughs> If it pulls apart, then you know you haven't done that yet. So, so just when you hold up the seam there. Okay, so I've done this side because there's only two, one, two, three. There's three on each side. So one. you've done that one. I've done that one. That one. That one. That one. Uh, another that one. one. You haven't done that one. Uh, you haven't done that one. Oh, so I've got to do the lining as well. Yes, oh. absolutely. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Take so all the lining, every every seam that's been cut needs to be re sewn okay. back tacked right. yes mm, every single seam oh slippery oh this is this is different Because this 
is, uh, I don't have to worry about the needle uh, because it's a different thread. I mean, different fabric, you know, this way. And, but it's only because we're doing, you know. Yeah, well, you've got, you've got a mixture of um, different threads there. It's fine. Um, and it's not playing up, is it? No. So that's no. fine. Did you do a back stitch then? Yeah, it automatically does it. Good machine, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, when you think about it, there's these basic steps. If it's automated, then you don't make a mistake. Mm. Oh, this is different. We're going to basically bag it out like this. And we're going to put the seams on top of each other. Like this, this seam here sits that side ah. and then the flat seam is like that. So let's just keep, oh, hang on. That one actually sits, sits, um, over as well. So we're not going to change the um, composition of that. So you just want to make sure all your seams are the way the rest of the... Yeah. Yep. Yep. And make sure that they're, um, they're matched up. So I've got two pins there to guide that. And we come up to the next one. And same thing, we're going to I've been painting, okay? Excuse my hands. No one's going to pay any attention there. Seriously. I'm so mesmerised by your skills. I'm, I've been painting and my, yeah, and as a result, my, my hands aren't in good nick. I must apologise. Don't take that out. You scrub up all right, <laughs> Justine, don't worry. Okay, so, and then, we, see, this is why we call it bagging out, right? Because I'm literally going to put the whole garment inside like a bag see that's bagging out and then it, I bet you're wondering gosh if she closes this up how is she going to get back into it well that'll be the next thing that we're going to teach you when you do bagging out you got to turn things inside out turn it inside out so I've basically put the whole garment inside there so I can seal up inside the inside, inside the right side of the fabric. The right and side is on the inside, yeah. yeah. And we're just bagging it like a big cushion, I suppose. We're just what we're going to do is just put all of that in there, right? So yes. then we can get this seam done. We can close it up. So that's what we're doing is we're closing it up. And then you're going to be thinking, how is she going to get it back out again? Well, that's the next little trick. So and um and jackets are done like this too you know like good tailored jackets are done this way as well so go right across there so that's just all the bottom hem that that's all the bottom cut. yep yep that's it we've um we put it all the way across so now we're going to go back to here and irene with her beautiful hands so we don't have to look at mine <laughs> is going to sew and she's and because we want we really like the length it is so we're not going to we're only going to have a 0.6 millimeter hem so that's what Irene is going to do next is is make sure that the needle is 0.6 which it is so line it up with the edge there and sew away okay you take it as normal and everybody is really impressed you mm. know Lots of young people need style tips. Yep. You know, like they need to know. That's, I know. And if we fix that, guess what? That's generational yep. change. Because layer upon layer, I say. A layer upon layer. Even in summer. Actually, you, you layer know, upon layer. Absolutely. Works. I'm reading this book from mm. the 70s, 80s, about this woman who teaches bigger women how to dress. Mm. And she's always about creating different lines mm. by wearing layers. And patterns. And patterns, yeah. yeah. Lines and patterns. And yeah. And I mean, like, there's, there's some patterns that bigger women. Okay. All right. Yeah. Make like, sure can that's can wear that we can't. You know what I mean? Because yep. I've got the real estate to show off those really yep. super big prints. And so okay, hang on. Make sure that all of that fabric's lined up perfectly. Uh, yeah. You know. It's yeah. It's moving because the yeah. You want it. You um because you don't. I don't want that in. Actually, it's okay because the lining. As long as the lining is sitting is back loose. and doesn't go over because you don't want um, it to pull from the outer. 
Yeah. I'll show you what I mean. Like, yeah. See, this is this is the. Mm, someone's become very fast on the machine. I was always fast <laughs> with my little brother industrial. Now I've got my little brother domestic. I just had to get used to riding the bike again. Mm. Very good. And you know, sewing is scary. Most people will share their horror stories before their wind stories, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny, we're funny creatures. Okay, we're just going to fix up this little thing. Um, I'll get you, get a. Um, where the bulk of it okay, is. Okay, so now we're just going to go back to about here. And you un when you do the, the seam you ripper, go. you just do two or three. Yeah, you just uh, spaces apart, right? And then you just pull it like that. Mm. Just get that piece of fabric. Not. Yep. There we go. All right. Sweet Start eyes. again. Now we're going to concentrate, aren't we? <laughs> it's just bulky it bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just hold your fingers there like that. Hold your, uh, hold your fingers close, but not so they get sewn. That's it. And also, just, just because you are doing a long line, make sure all of this is sitting really nicely behind you lined up. Yeah, because if, if it goes over that way or this way, it forces your machine that, you know. Ah, so the, how mm. the fabric sits on the other end, like on this side, yeah. makes a difference to how you sew. Yeah, it does. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's good yeah. to know. So now, yep. we're going to take the pins out. Like this. Get all those pins out. And we're going to, now, we're going to open this up here. Just there. Right, to about there. And then Irene is going to pop on the machine again and just back tack, back tack. Okay. All right. All right. So we're prepping, we're prepping the birthing of the jacket. Is yeah. that what we're doing? We are. We're. <laughs> I, mother I, don't, I don't really want to say, is it 10 centimetres dilated? <laughs> anyway, so we're going to, we're just going to, so, so it, the stitches do not undo. Just make, just go down a little bit more, just let's reinforce it. So, yeah, and go back again, yeah. And then we're going to do down there. So we've got a nice big um, entry point or exit point. No, I want to, I might just come down a little bit further this way because I went a little bit over on mm -hmm. the other end. Okay. This is so clever. So this I is would never have thought So to now do this. this is so now we, what we're going to do is we're going to do the bagging out. So if you ever hear that term in um, sewing. Yeah we um, do it in the pencil skirt and I think on Okay. The the bolero. Yeah. Alright so we're just going to get rid of a little bit of loose threads. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to bag out this lovely kimono. We do it very gently so we don't um, rip the, the lining seams. So. So see the way I'm doing it? I'm just trying really hard to not force anything. Just, I'm just doing it a is little bit at a time. Kind of like, and it's a, it's a beautiful baby girl. <laughs> it's a baby girl. All right, so now, now we've bagged it out. You can see what we've done there. Now my, what we need to do now is do my little dip stitch along here which is going to keep it nicely folded back. So now Irene is going to go through here like this, all the way to this end. We might have to just chop off a little bit of the corner, not much because um, we don't want it to unravel. And then we get a little pin 
Okay, so just go in here like that. And make the corner pointy. Make it as pointy as we can, considering we didn't mite it completely. Okay, so now, and then we'll go to the other side too. Like that. And I didn't actually do any chopping then, but it looks okay. It looks like um, it's done the corner well. So option A and option B. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So where's the ditch stitch, stitch go again on right. the inside? Yeah. So now, millimeter. so we've done, I hope it's big enough. If it's not, you can, you can release some more of that. But we've got to go over here and then we make sure we line up the fabric on the lining side like that. See? Yes. And then we do a, a dip stitch which holds the um, lining back. So do you want to attempt just, that? We're going oh, okay. to attempt that or, All right. or will I do it? Well, how about you show me? Okay, okay so we go under and then we line up the foot on the lining side and then we've got the you can see it well with this one you can see the lining underneath and then we pop the needle in and we start and we do the back pack so I've just I've just started the stitch um, near the corner yeah. and and I'm just making sure that the fabric is is lying that way under the lining see and I'm just going to do the the um, pin stitch which holds it in place and it goes and I make sure that I'm not catching any any uh, fabric underneath it except for what I want to catch which is that seam allowance so see I just keep checking yeah and the purpose is just purely to ensure that that it's a nice sharp is. edge it's a nice sharp fold yeah. back under um, we'll iron afterwards and I'll show you just how neat and tidy this pin stitch makes everything so So you've gone past the halfway mark and you're going... Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm probably um, Almost done. edging towards the other side of the front. So see how I keep pulling um, that, making sure that nothing is getting caught underneath. Um, always good to sew a little bit and check what's going on because it's so easy to um, stitch up another part of the jacket that you don't want stitched up. So just keep checking, pulling and checking. See it's getting pretty close, it's okay. But checking, checking. And you can sort of see, well because it's white lining, it's very easy to see that uh, we're not catching anything. Now it's sort of like getting to the pointy end. Not really, it's, it's kind of, this has been quite easy because I, I think we opened up enough of the lining. Okay, so we're getting near the end. So I'm pulling it apart as much as I can and I'll stitch it as far as it stays flat for me. See, it's getting really close to the corner now. Can you see? Really close to the corner, it's getting harder to do. So I'm gonna have to probably stop right there. And maybe we hand stitch the last bit. No, no, you don't need to. It's, it's fine. fine. Yep, it's close enough. And look how close to the corner it is. So, there here we go. go. Done. And now we're going to um, close up that hole that we made here. So, there's the hole that we bagged through. So, now I think we're going to just sew it. So, we pick up there 
We pick up over there. Top you'll suit. always see you'll always see an area in a in a tailored jacket that has um, oh, a seam. That is the like bagging a, a out seam. It's the bagging out seam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so just so those two. Okay, and then we're going to. Back. Done. Okay, I believe this is a polyester. I don't think it's a silk. No, I don't think it's a so, silk. So, um, and polyesters and man made fabrics burn very, very easily. So, we're going to put it maybe halfway through. Um, it'll be more on the synthetics, so maybe high synthetics, and then I'm going to test the heat on the fabric that. Only a little bit of it because I don't I just don't want to melt <laughs> fabric. So we're going to check it on the piece that we've chopped off, make sure that we've got the right um, temperature for it, right? So if I do that there, what's happening? Looks pretty good to me. And we've still got a bit of steam. And then I'm going to check the lining out too, because I don't want to melt the lining. Very easy to melt lining as well. So that looks pretty good, I think. So now we're going to do this. Um, and you can see, see how the pin stitching has just made it so easy to get it to sit back, to keep it flat. So now we just go across, there we go. The ironing just finishes it off. Yeah. It just gives it that, you know, professional um, appeal. And then so, um, and then also just iron, see that's where we did the, the opening up. And at the same time, and we're just going to tidy it up. Uh, very important to get rid of all your little old loose threads. So we're just chopping away all those little bits and pieces there. And probably add a, because it's a synthetic, it's um, if I use a bit of spray, it shouldn't mark it. So I'm going to use a bit of spray just to help to um, meld the fabric, get it doing what we want it to do. So I'm going to put a bit more spray down. And then just after you put the spray down just maybe it's kind of easier to just do it with your hands first um, get rid of the more threads yeah so if you don't have a sewing machine you can still make it <laughs> By hand stitching. <laughs> By hand stitching. It's just a slip stitch all the way through. Um, and then you've got uh, an original kimono. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> done, done in um, the old method. Okay, so here we go. Now we're just going to try and neaten up this corner as much as we can might just wet that too. It's sort of easier to mould when it's a little bit wet. Okay. I'll just turn that over. Have a look at it there. Just needs a little bit of ironing flat. Yeah, it's close enough. Okay, all right, so we're done. The jacket is done. Mind you, um, 
putting it in a bucket of nappy sand for a couple of days wouldn't hurt it. Really? Yeah. Will that get rid of some of that yellow? Yeah, it will. Okay, it will. It'll bring it up a little bit sparkly white background again yeah. and it will get rid of some of the rust stains. Yeah, you should be able to just um, use the nappy sand spray first yeah, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, leave it for about spray. Leave it for about 20 minutes, um, just crunch it up together so it doesn't um, dry out. Yeah. So crunch it up together so there's no way of getting to where you've sprayed the to stains. Dry. Okay. And, then, yeah. um, and then after 20 minutes, drop it into some nappy sand. Doesn't destroy the fabric at all and it takes the yellow out of it. So, and, um, and you'll get, yeah, you'll get a really nice looking piece. Hey, thanks for watching. I thought I'd leave this message on the end to let you know what we're doing in 2020 and beyond. 2019 was an epic year of working out the bumps and the ironing out the, uh, the creases in the way that we are teaching and how we're delivering our content. And what we've really found out is the way that we're teaching, it helps you be empowered when you get to the sewing machine. So we're going to build on that in 2020 with a live learn to sew course in the first four months of the year starting at late January once everybody's recovered from the Christmas crazy. So what you need to do is subscribe to the channel or jump on our website and join the newsletter because that's when we're going to be letting people know when we're going to be opening the course and you get access to all of our patterns, all of our videos and you get to ask us questions about your sewing challenges, your machine, where you're at. We talk about tension, needles, fabric, and then once you know the basics of sewing and sewing really well then we're going to leap over into sustainable sewing techniques from some amazing people that have been upcycling for decades and they're going to show us how to find the pearls in op shops and secondhand clothing so that you can actually make something new from something old and save more fabric and clothing from ending up in landfill which is the whole goal of learning how to sew so i can't wait for you to join us so subscribe or here to our youtube channel and our newsletter we don't spam you we just tell you the good stuff when we find it all right thanks for watching let's go make it